The first book of the Bible, the closing passages from Genesis says, As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. These perpetrators of really what was uh, the worst day in the history of Birmingham, the darkest day, they meant evil. They were hate. But God took those ashes and took that tragedy and turned it into something still tragic, still heartbreaking, but resulting in a civil rights movement and a movement for good, for peace, for love. And those little girls, innocent as they were, shed their blood, but not without a result. And so I say to the families, they will join Rosa Parks as true heroes of the civil rights movement. And it's very fitting that she would look over us today as we talk about them because they have joined her in history. And let me say something else. As Steny Hoyer and I have talked about, John Lewis and Eric, it was a nonviolent movement. And John Lewis and I actually went to India and retraced Gandhi's steps. And he patterned it as nonviolent. It was nonviolent only to those advocating equal rights. There was a lot of violence directed at them. But as on this day in Birmingham, the families, Martin Luther King, John Lewis, Fred Shuttlesworth, chose not to return good with evil, not to return hate with more hatred. And the civil rights movement in America, if you understand nothing else about it, know that because of the courage of people like John Lewis, it remained a nonviolent movement. And what we're seeing in Syria, what Linda and I saw in Belfast when a bomb went off, we are not experiencing that today because of the commitment to peaceful settling of our grievance, peaceful resistance, standing up and fighting and going to jail, but not resorting to violence. And that is a legacy that we ought to thank everyone who participated in this movement. Thank you very much.